right, everybody, good morning to you. Another beautiful day the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Um, so top of the morning to you. Thank you for our, um, for trusting me and allowing me into your private space for a time of encouragement, inspiration, and motivation through the reading and the dialogue of God's Word. Um, we're praying this morning. There's a lot of inclement weather going around in our country, so we're praying um, for our um, fellow citizens in Tennessee where they had some um, tornadoes that come through one o'clock this morning. So a lot's going on in the far northeast, snow and um, traffic jam, 50 car traffic jam yesterday, um, pile up yesterday rather. So we we'll keep them in prayer. Hey, Yoshika, good morning to you. So we have a lot to be thankful for and a lot to be in prayer regarding also. All right. So let's go ahead and go to the Father in prayer. Hey, Tiffany, good morning. Lord, indeed, we thank you and we honor you for you are a just God and you, and you do all things well. And Father, I pray that that mankind will be aware of your sovereignty and therefore we'll make better decisions about what we do and how we do it and how we use um, all the gifts that you've given us, Father, to help humanity. And I pray for my brothers and sisters that the biggest thing, the greatest thing we could offer is to tell people about your love, your free love, free grace, and free forgiveness so that we would not, they would not just be concerned about life on this side, but life eternally. And they're not just concerned about life eternally, but how to live life to its fullest on this side because we'll be representing you. We honor you. We thank you for this time this morning. Let it be for us, whatever your desire is for it to be. And we give you all the thanks in advance. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hey, Kendra, good morning to you. Um, so let's go with our conversation. So we started a new thought um, for the month entitled Going Deeper, Going Deeper. So it's my prayer that we will continue to do the work to go deeper. Our key passage for this series for the month is Psalm. Hey, Renata, good morning to you. <clears throat> praying for you, praying for your mom. Good to see you on this morning. Um, our passage for the month is found in um, Psalm number 42, Psalm number 42, where it says, as the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul um, pants for you, my God. So as the deer pants for the streams of water, what's going on, Troy? So my soul pants for you, my God. There should always be um, a sense of desperation for believers. And again, as I explained on yesterday, this sense of desperation is not the sense of, I don't know what to do and I'm about to give up on life. Hey, April Rose, good morning to you, ma'am. That's not desperation. Hey, Tika, good morning to you. Miss you Sunday, good to see you, ma'am. Um, that's not desperation. But this, the, the type of spiritual desperation that I'm suggesting to us is that we should always live in, this, in a space where we know that we, we cannot live without God. We cannot live without knowing that his hands are upon us. So we do all that we can to protect the unity that we have, the relationship that we have with God. And by doing that, then we're also protecting the unity we have with our brothers and sisters. So going deep, we've got to go deeper. And where we started this week is the idea of deep cleaning, deep cleaning. So we're going to be um, journeying through um, 1 John all month, all right? So since you know where we're going, just go ahead and read 1 John. It's not a long book, not a long epistle. So just go ahead and read that. So let's let's start with verses 5 through 7. The word of the Lord says this. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him um, and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. Hey, Tanya, good morning to you, ma'am. Verse seven, but if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. This is first John five through seven. Um, so here's the thought for um, today. The thought today is if we're going to um, have deep cleaning, all right? We must have the lights on. 
If you're going to do some deep cleaning, you've got to have the lights on. Um, I was telling my mom uh, about my, about, I'm not going to say which one of my kids it is, about how my kid um, will try to clean with the lights off. And I was just a fussing, talking to my mom, making a big joke out of it, but, but frustrated, like, who does this? Um, who cleans the kitchen in the dark? And I'm just a fussing and carrying on. And my mom said, you know, I knew somebody just like that. Hey, Tiffany, good morning to you. And I said, you did? I said, which one of your sisters? She said, no, it was my son. And I was like, well, what? Oh, she said, the one I'm talking to. <laughs> Trying to clean in the dark. So when we turn the lights on, it's revealed to us in a much clearer way um, all of the spaces and areas of dirt that, that must be cleaned. So doing some spot cleaning is one thing. You know how you just, you pick up along the way, you know, you're, you're in, in the quest of finding what you're going to wear today. You just happen to put all of the clothes in the hamper and you just, you know, you kind of organize your closet and that's just kind of some spot cleaning. But to do some deep cleaning, uh, I put three things on your mind yesterday. And I'll, I'll say them again. If we're going to do some deep cleaning, three things have to be on the table. Hey, Larry, good morning, sir. First one is it must be a personal desire. If you're going to deep clean, it has to be something that you want to do. Um, when 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 my mother would tell me it's time to do some, or when I tell my children time to do some cleaning, it's not necessarily their personal desire, right? Because they have some other things they want to do. My son, um, he has some things he wants to do for sure, and they have nothing to do with cleaning. It's all about Beyblades or doing something else that's going to be productive for him. So there's no personal desire in it until I ignite that desire within him. Um. It must be a priority. If you're going to clean, it's got to be a priority. It's got to be a personal desire. It's got to be a priority, and it must be done with power. Meaning, in deep cleaning, you got to you have to put some elbow grease into it. That's what they used to call it, elbow grease. You have to put some some work into it because depending on how long the stain has been there, how deep it is, you just can't wipe it off just by a casual wipe. All right. So if you're going to do some deep cleaning. You gotta turn the lights on, everybody. And the the passage um, um, uh, is clear to us that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness. Right? Uh, if we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. So light and truth is God. Right? And if we're going to um, claim koinonia, fellowship with God, we must live in the light and live out the light's truth. Hey, Missy, good morning to you. And live out the light truth, the light's truth. Um, John wants the church to know uh, here in this epistle that they are the light and they need to address uh, some dark situations within the church. All right. So what's happening in the church is you have uh, at this particular time false teachers and their lies are, 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 are pursuing, are making their way, those lies are making their way through the church. And so John wants the church to be aware that just because one claims to be a part of them, what they're saying is not a part of them. So the church needs to know what's going on. So now get this, Paul is not talking, this, this epistle is not to the world, this epistle to the culture, this epistle is to the church. Now, as we discussed on yesterday, um, I, did I say Paul? I'm sorry. This um, John writes to the church. He writes to the church of Asia Minor. He is um, the pastor that Paul sends to um, lead the church in Ephesus. He is the last of the um, apostles that lived. He's the last one to die. He is the, um, he, um, I think it's around AD, um, between AD 95 and AD 98, 
he pins these epistles as he is in the last years of his life. You don't find John preaching throughout the Gospels. Um, you don't um, find him preaching in Acts. Um, but at the end of his life, um, God shows him something, reveals something to him that's going to uh, help and affect the church. John is a super bad dude, right? And so he says to them um, that you are the light. In in 1 Timothy 6, it talks about that, that, that God dwells um, in unapproachable light. Hey, Philip, good morning, sir. Um, James 1 and 17 is a beautiful text. Um, so what you're saying that this scripture... Yes, sir. Yeah, this is not figurative. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. James 1 and 17 says something so beautiful. It says, every good and perfect gift from, comes from above, coming down from the father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So what we have to understand is that the light that is in us comes from God. So just as we must turn the lights on to do deep cleaning, we are the light of the world, Jesus exclaims in Matthew 5. And so therefore, our lights have got to be shining so that um, the cleaning that must be done within our own hearts, the cleaning that must happen within our churches happens not in darkness, but in light. You see, if we leave the lights off, we give rodents and insects privilege to run around, run about, and do their little small biting that eat that that eventually causes expensive um, damage. If we if we if we try to do the life that God give, give, has given us in the darkness, we're doing the light that comes from the Father, the Father's light, a disservice. The light that Jesus has given to the world, we're saying that the light is not good enough. All right. In, uh, um, in John 18 and 12, John writes this and says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but, but will have the light of my life. Everybody, that's why the great challenge is for us as believers is to trust in God all the way. And I understand because we, we all live in, live on this earth. So sometimes it seems like, it can seem like um, living in the light, following the light is not leading us anywhere. But honey, child, let me tell you, uh, uh, being in the light of God, being in koinonia, in fellowship with God is the greatest, it's the best, it's the only place where you want to be. Because the moment you step outside of the light, now you're in the shadow of light. And shadow does not light up the space in front of you like light does. And so if we're going to walk in the light, if we're going to walk in God, that means we got to walk in his word. Um, David said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, brings light, a, a light unto my pathway. So God's word is gives us light, but are we reading it? We have these smartphones on our hips, in our pockets, in our purses. On those, far, that, 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 that smartphone is, is, uh, has more capability, more power than the, the computers that got the first rocket ship on the moon. We have all of this stuff at our hand, right there in our hands. We have Bibles, we have translations, we have commentaries. But the sad piece is some of us are still no uh, more stronger, no more deeper in God's word than we were before. And we've got it right here in our hands. So there's the, we, we cannot continue to offer lifeless excuses as to why we're not going further in uh, and deeper down, as Pastor Baylor would say, in God's word. No excuse. There's no excuse. Uh, Bible searching alone. Yeah, man, that ain't reading. There's no excuse why as a Christian man that we're barking at our wives. 
that we just we stay frustrated with our wives, that is that they have to walk on eggshells because they don't know how we're going to respond. And we have the word of God as our light to help balance us. There's no reason why as a wife, we, 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 we are so standoffish towards our husband and our children. And we have the word of we have the word of light right here in front of us that's showing us the way that is clear and cuts through the, 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 the bone uh, with precision right here. And we're walking in darkness. Come on, everybody. It's twinkle twinkle. It, we, we've got to we, we've got to make the decision that we choose to do it God to do it God's way so that we can have the honor of God's type of response. All right. So turn the light on. Now, could, the light could be for you today is to get into his word, get into his word more and not just. And we're going to see, as, as John says later on, not just being hearers of the word, but being doers of the word, putting some action behind it. Uh, my dad would say some of us have a whole lot of hallelujah, but no do you lulia. Meaning we talk a real good game. I mean, wow, people walk away from us like, man, that dude right there is on it. But living it out, nah, just doesn't quite make it. No, and when and when and when the saints realize that you're not really a saint, you're you're you are an undercover ain't. No, we, 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 that cannot be the way we respond as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially for all that we know of who God is, who, what, what Christ has done for us. And we're still making the conscious decision to walk in darkness. Some things have got to change everybody. They just have to change. In John nine and five, there's the episode of, uh, uh, the man that was blind and Jesus spits on the ground and makes makes mud of the of the, of the clay and of the dirt and spit and puts on his eyes. He said, while I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. So what God does is God delivers this man out of darkness, out of blindness into light. And I want you to know the power of God still does the work today. Only God can deliver us out of this mental and spiritual darkness and allows us to step into his presence so that we can have, we can live in the illumination of his, of his person, the, the, the illuminating essence of God, his glory. We can live in that space, but it starts with you. We've got to make the conscious decision, decision daily that we desire to do it God's way. Wow. Is that making sense for us? Um, Paul even picks this up in Ephesians 5, 8, 5 and 8 and, and, and talks about um, um, our lights, uh, our lives shining like lights uh, to be a witness to the world. Y'all, there's something about this light thing, something about this light thing that should be drawing us into God when we are drawn in by darkness, then everything, all the decisions that we make can now be questionable. We're going to talk about that even more so next week. But again, the passage says, um, God is light in him. There is no darkness at all. So if we are finding success away from the light of God's word, if we are finding success away from what God says to, says to us specifically and personally, it's in darkness. And we should not find peace in darkness. <laughs> The believer finds peace in the light, in the light alone. Mm -mm. And don't, don't, don't try to, we, we can't twist it around and make it fit in like, well, where, but that, that, I don't know about the, the darkness. No, 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 no. As, as a believer, we sleep in the light. <laughs> we live in the light. Now, don't be so silly. I'm not talking about the lights in the room. I'm talking about the light of God's word. Those songs says, walk in the light. Though him beautiful light, somewhere the dew drops of mercy sign bright, shines all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Everything we do must be above board. It must be done in the light. Is that making sense for us today? All right, it must be done in, excuse me, in the light. Um, now get this. When we are when we are cleaning, there are how would I say there are different products, different solutions that we use for different 
um, spaces, different types of material. So like when it's time for deep cleaning and, it's, and you have hardwood floors, uh, <clears throat> you just don't spot clean that. And I know when it's time to do some real cleaning because my wife um, says sends me to the garage to get that blue bucket. That blue bucket, when that blue bucket comes out, uh, that's when that good mop is coming out. And that's when that Murphy's oil is about to be pulled out. You know what I mean? So you get, you have a specific type of product that you use and specific instruments you use to clean certain areas, to deep clean and really get into there and get the grime and all that out. Now, when it comes to cleaning our lives, we don't have to have a different product for it. God doesn't use a different product. Um, the scripture says, um, but if we walk in the light as he is a light, we have fellowship with one another. Here it is. The blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us of all sin. Come on, y'all know where I'm going with this. So the only product, the only substance that cleanses us of all of our sins is still the blood of Jesus. All right. So the blood of Jesus, the atoning work of Christ has satisfied the debt of our sins and the blood of Jesus still runs from Calvary to wherever you are today. His blood is still working and it purifies us. It cleanses us. Uh, what Christ has done, he has become what, what Paul declares as the propitiation of sin. So Christ has taken the place of us on the cross and he has satisfied um, the, the, the debt of our lives. Now get this, although Christ has satisfied the debt, we still have to deal with the, the responsibilities of what we've done. We got to deal with the ramifications of it, but get this, it has been paid. Now you ought to lift your hands and tell the Lord, thank you for paying my debt for me. Yes, ma'am. Isn't that, isn't that a beautiful piece of the song? Uh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never, ever lose its power. Blood of The blood of Jesus is still working. So there's not a product that, that satisfies a, a, a stealing sin. There's not a, 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 for a stealing debt. There's not a murdering debt that something cleans that up. There's not a lying debt to clean that up. Uh, what's going on, Reese? Good morning to you, sir. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. The blood of Jesus has satisfied the debt of all of our sins. And for this reason, we should never want to walk in darkness ever again. But we should find peace and joy living in the light. Hey, Shamika, good morning to you, sis. Good to see you. So we should find the joy we need in light. And again, we're talking about deep cleaning. And the only way we can do deep cleaning properly is by turning on the light. <laughs> you cannot clean adequately in the darkness. You have to turn on the light. And again, here in 1 John, um, John declares, uh, this is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, he is a light. We have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. All right, everybody, my time is up. So I pray that you're encouraged today to know that the work that must be done is done in the light and it has been satisfied through the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for our time this morning. Thank you for being reminded that your blood is still at work and what Christ has done, what God has done in igniting light and love for us by sending Jesus Christ to the world and what we have done by accepting the example of Christ, accepting the, 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 the love and the death of Christ, light now lives in us. And that light comes forth, it manifests through your word. It manifests through personal revelation. And so now we have the decision to make, will we trust the light or will we trust the darkness? So Father, we choose to walk in the light. Thank you for uh, reminding us 
of the joy that we have in our salvation, that we don't have to live this life in darkness, but you have given us the illumination of your word, the illumination of your essence um, to carry out the things of our lives. So we thank you, we love you, and we bless your name. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same sun, it's your name that's worthy to be praised. So Father, we thank you and we um, pour our hearts out to you. We live vulnerably in your presence, Father. Father, for your usage on today. And as we leave our homes, and some of us are already driving, going into the marketplace for the day, let your light shine and guide us, Father, and we'll trust you for the journey. Lord, bless us and keep us. May your face shine upon us and be gracious to us. Lift your countenance upon us and give us your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being on. Um, yes, ma'am, there it is, Jamaica. Um, thank you for your support. We will look forward to seeing you tomorrow for another time of Mac in the Morning. Have a fantacable day. Don't forget, if you want to see my favorite person, you know what to do. Just turn around and look in the mirror. Have a great day. All right, Larry, we'll see you then. All right, bye-bye.